Hi guys, here's your lesson for the second day of Law of Sines. Um, once again, Law of Sines allows us to solve for triangles that are not right triangles. So our ratio for Law of Sines, once again, is sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. Um, so for all of these problems, you're going to be given an angle and two of the sides. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and sketch out the triangle. And I have A, B, C. I know angle A is 118 degrees. I know side A is 20. I know side B is 17. And I don't know side C. Okay, so for law of sines, you need to have an angle and its corresponding side. So I have my A and A, so I can go ahead and set up my first ratio. So I have sine of 118 over 20. And since I'm given side B, I'm going to go ahead and solve for angle B. So I have sine of B over 17. Again, I can cross multiply and you're getting sine B by itself. So that gives me 17 sine of 118 over 20. This I'm gonna go ahead and plug in. And that gives me 0 0.7505. And I'm gonna use the inverse sine of 0 0.7505 and that's going to give me the measure of angle B. Now I'm going to go ahead and round to the nearest degree so that's going to be 49 degrees. Now whenever you are solving triangles using law of sines and you solve for an angle measurement first, okay, so we solve for um, angle B first, um, there is a possibility that you are going to have another triangle. So if I give you an angle and two of the sides and you're using law of sines, you could have one solution, no solution, or two solutions. So I always check to see if there's a second solution. So I'm going to go ahead and label this as B1. And then over here, I'm going to pretend like there's another triangle. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch out a second possible triangle. I'm still using the same given information. So I still know that angle A is 118. I still know that side A is 20. I still know that side B is 17. Now I'm going to go ahead and find my second possible solution for angle B. The second possible solution for angle B is the supplement of your first possible solution. So supplementary angles add up to 180, so my second possible solution is going to be 180 minus your first solution. So I have 180 minus 49 degrees. So B2 is going to equal 131 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my first triangle. So we know that your first angle measurement for B is 49 degrees. So this right here is 49 degrees, which means I can solve for angle C since I know two of the other angles. I'm going to go ahead and label this as C1 since we might have a C2 over here. So C1 is going to be 180 minus 118 minus the 49 degrees. So that's going to be 13 degrees. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here. So we solved for our second possible angle for B and that was 131 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and solve for angle C since I know these two angle measurements. So I'm going to take 180 minus 118 minus 131 and that gives me negative 69 degrees. Well, you can't really have a negative angle measurement in the triangle, which means for this particular triangle, there is one unique solution. So this triangle does not actually exist. Sad face. But it's good because there's only one solution. So that means I just need to go back to this and finish off the triangle. I now have all three angles. I'm still missing my side C, so I'm gonna use the law of sines to solve for side C. I still have A and A, 
So I have sine of 118 over 20 equals sine of angle C, which was 13 degrees, over little c for the sine. So I'm going to stay consistent. I'm going to label this as C1. Cross multiply and solve, and you get 20 sine of 13 degrees over sine of 118 degrees. And your side is 5.1. So this one only had one triangle that ended up working. For the second example, I'm going to go ahead and sketch out my triangle again. So I have A, B, C, A, B, C. Angle A is 50 degrees. Side A is 5. Side B is 9. So again, I have my angle side pair with my A's. So I have sine of 50 over 5 equals, since I have side B, I'm going to go ahead and solve for angle B. So sine of B over 9. Cross multiplying and getting sine of B by itself, that's going to be 9 sine of 50 divided by 5. So 9 sine of 50 divided by 5 is 1.3789. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the inverse to solve for the angle. Well, when I try to do this in the calculator, it gives me an error. Okay, so since we have an error, no triangle exists. Which means for this one, there is no solution. So we'll never be able to create a triangle that has angle A being 50 degrees, side A being 5, and side B being 9. So once again, when you're using the law of sines to solve triangles, and you're solving for an angle measurement, you have three possible scenarios. You might have one triangle, which is what we had for this first one. You might have no triangle, which is what we have for this one. And you might have two solutions, two triangles. So let's see what the next example brings. process of elimination should tell you that this one probably has two triangles. But let's check anyway. So this is 39 degrees. Side A is 10. Side B is 14. And we don't know side C. So I'm going to set up my ratio with my A's. Given side A, so I'm going to go ahead and solve for angle A. Or sorry, angle B. Given side B, I'm going to go ahead and solve for angle B, getting all my variables mixed up. Cross multiply, get sine B by itself. I'm going to go ahead and take this, plug it into my calculator. That gives me 0 0.8810. I'm going to do the inverse sine to solve for the angle. I'm going to go ahead and label that as B1, just in case we have another triangle. And that gives me 61.8 degrees, which I'm going to round to the nearest degree. So that's going to be 62 degrees. OK. I'm going to go ahead and set up my second scenario over here, if there is a second scenario. So angle A is still the same, that's 39 degrees, side A is still 10, side B is still 14, and we know that that's true because it was given to us. Okay, to find our second possible angle measurement for B, for B2, I'm taking 180 degrees minus my first measurement for B. So B2 is 180 minus 62, which is 118 degrees. Okay, so for my first triangle, we know that this is 62 degrees. 
For the second triangle, this is going to be 118 degrees, which obviously not drawn to scale. So since we know two angles in both the triangles, we can go ahead and find the third angle. So my angle C for this one is going to be 180 minus 39 minus 62, which is 79 degrees. For my second triangle, I'm going to do 180 minus the 39 degrees minus the 118 degrees, and that gives me 23 degrees. So if you notice, we got a positive angle measurement for C, which was not the case with this first example. We got a negative angle measurement, so the, tri the second triangle did not exist. Well, for this case, your second tri triangle does exist, which means you will have two solutions. So we now know that this is 79 degrees, and then this second triangle, we know that this is 23 degrees. Both triangles are still missing side C, so I'm going to solve for side C with each particular pieces of information. So I still have my A and A, so I have sine of 39 over 10 equals sine of C, which was 79 degrees, over little c. Cross multiply and solve and you get 10 sine of 79 over sine of 39. So 10 sine of 79 divided by sine of 39 equals 15.6. So this first triangle is complete. Now we're moving on to your second triangle. So we still have our angle side pair. So I'm still using sine A over A. If you notice, we use this with both triangles because it was true for both triangles. And now I'm trying to solve for my little C2. So my angle for C2 is 23 degrees. And now I'm solving for the side. So that's gonna be 10 sine of 23 degrees divided by sine of 39 degrees. Plug that in, and that gives me 6.2. So we had two possible triangles that had angle A as 39 degrees, side A as 10, and side B as 14. All right, so that's it for the second day of Law of Signs.